So hello to Kieran Ryan in in Scotland. Where in Scotland are you now? I'm in Edinburgh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or Edinburgh. Even here, here sometimes we say it just like if you were to spell it, it would be E M B R A Embra. <laughs> Embra. Em yeah, that's the that's the quick way, but yeah, Edinburgh. I need I need to practice that. That's amazing. And are you a born in in beep <laughs> to or no, I was born in the northeast of Scotland, so in a county called Angus, which you might know for the beef. Yeah. Uh, Angus beef. But yeah, it's like just kind of south of Aberdeenshire on the northeast. But I've been here for like eleven years. Yeah. It must be very beautiful. Uh, I mean, your your city and town as well, but but uh, where you come from? Yeah, it's it's kind of like it's more when you think of like Scottish landscape. It's not quite like that. It's because that's like the west coast, but the east coast, the northeast, is like kind of rolling hills, lots of farmland, and uh, big sprawling beaches. It's really nice, but and it's not on the it's not on the tourist uh, route, so it's a bit quieter in that sense which is nice kind of yeah. less too yeah quite quite empty but yeah, yeah big big fields and lots of yeah lots of farming but you have the heights and the the valleys and the the high places and the, uh you know it's not as flat as here where i live now it's uh, probably a lot of if you go for a run you might find some ups and downs <laughs> probably yeah no, yeah, relatively, yeah. It's 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 still got still got hills and stuff. Which yeah. Is good. But uh, is it uh, it, the the place where you're from? Is it a village or is it kind of a small town or or countryside? Well, it's it's technically a city. It's called Brecon City, and this has been a cause for much um, kind of mockery because it's it's only like eight thousand people. Yeah. But, it's called uh, yeah it's got it's got a cathedral so here we have like cathedral cities so it's um i think it must be one of the smallest cities in the country because it's eight thousand feels like a town you know but yeah we take pride in our city status <laughs> of course yeah yeah i mean we got smallest uh, cities in finland oh, really? so so you can always say that well <laughs> you know <laughs> there are countries we even smaller yeah. yeah, but that's very nice. Uh, and is it so, um, or you, you, it is a city. I, I was just thinking, um, uh, because we have this problem in in Finland where people tend to move only, of course, to the bigger cities, and and so the smaller cities gets even smaller, and the countryside gets even more scarcely populated. So is it kind of the same in Scotland, or how? Um, yeah, I mean. Glasgow, obviously a lot of people move to Glasgow, that's kind of the biggest city, even though yeah. it's not the capital, but um, yeah, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, Dundee, Inverness kind of are like the main cities and yeah, I mean, I think yeah, especially a lot of young people, they do move to, especially the central belt, like Edinburgh, Glasgow, um, yeah, I mean, most of my friends moved away mm. and it depends what you've got in your town, I mean, the town I'm from, there's nothing really there. There's not much music scene either, which is a bit of a problem. There is a musical culture in that area, but in the actual town, there's, there's absolutely nothing happening. So, yeah, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me. I had to go elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, Scotland is so filled with traditional music. Uh, and I guess your your home area has a lot of tunes as well. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a there's a really strong fiddle um, style that's from the northeast of Scotland. So, yeah, the the fiddle playing style in Scotland is so like um, regional. So there's the styles vary differently between like thirty miles. You can hear in somebody's playing where they're from, basically, um, quite like pinpointing it to quite a small radius. So, yeah, the northeast has got a there's a really famous composer called James Scott Skinner who wrote loads of these 
kind of folk tunes years and years ago. Um, so yeah, there's like a definite style from there um, in the in the playing and in the sort of writing of the tunes. Wow. And and it's I mean it's more common all the traditional music you you are more it's more of a hype in your country because it's such a big part somehow of your um, people I've understood yeah. that you're very much aware of your traditions and and all the beautiful music you have yeah yeah and also because because we're so related to Ireland um, they also have a huge music like, like folk music culture so I think we're not on our own it's like we're kind of sharing it with them. So we have like the power of the two countries, you know, in one, which is great. Mm. Even though we still have our distinct styles and genres, kind of, you know, it's still it's still Celtic music. So, Absolutely. yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's pretty amazing this, for the size of Scotland to have, you know, population to have such a strong scene. It's, it's incredible, yeah. And it's, it's 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 like young people as well are very much into it. So it's not yeah. like this that you need to kind of do this revival because it's all already you know yeah. it it works. And so, in Finland, it's uh, you kind of have to first tell people that they, there is a tradition. People don't yeah. know about that there is a tradition. We have a strong tradition and and a lot of traditional no music, and then then you have to tell them about their roots and and then uh, play the music and usually they like it a lot but it's it's a huge job kind of to convince people that hello we have this tradition and you um, have a lot of jam sessions in the pubs and yeah it's kind of another part of the it's such a kind of strong thing in the culture is the pub sessions so that's that's where you would that's where pretty much everyone who plays traditional music would learn how to do it you know obviously some people would have lessons and stuff but the real kind of craft is learned at the at the pubs even when you're a kid you know <laughs> so um, this is how you grew up probably too it was the way yeah. you learned to play in the sessions yeah, totally yeah, yeah. And like, so like like there's a lot of like small town festivals folk festivals where they'd have sessions in all the pubs and yeah I think one of my f earlier memories was like Get, getting brought to these sessions by my parents and you know be all these that was when you could smoke in pubs and stuff so I remember this memory of all the pubs being filled with smoke and the drunk people <laughs> playing music and I used to sleep underneath the table they were playing around and I just remember like remember these memories of these big feet like like smashing down next to my face and whiskey and smoke everywhere <laughs> that's <laughs> amazing <laughs> That could be a start of, you know, when they make the movie about you. And and I love this, that you bring your kids to the pub yeah. and it's no yeah. problem. And it's yeah. OK if 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 they fall asleep, you know, to, as you told me, the, the, you know, the feet going with the rhythm and and yeah. you're just being able to sleep in that um, you yeah. know, noise and, well, and beautiful music combination. At the time, I remember. I didn't hate it, but I used to play along as well. But then um, there were times where I just wished, oh, I wish I could just go home, you know, go to bed. Yeah. But I'm, I'm grateful now because it just kind of, like, kind of forced its way into my head, all this music, you know. So it's yeah. definitely, yeah, even if you're not playing, just, just hearing it and being, being around it um, is definitely a, a benefit, you know. Life. Yeah, that's so <laughs> great. And yeah, yeah. Did your parents play as well? Do they play, and or or your family? Is it very uh, musical? Well, my, my dad plays the the flute, wooden flute, and the whistle, and you know the bow on the yeah the yes. Irish, um, and my sister plays the fiddle, and my mum used to do Irish dancing. Wow! So we used to do like, Kay you know, Kayleys, the Scottish dance. We used to do play Kayleys as a family band and stuff. Wow. Um, which yeah, it was quite fun. And she used to um, she, my mum always dances at we forget a wedding or a party or sometimes even just the pub, she'll just start start dancing. That's um, amazing. Um but yeah, somebody thought to call us the Von Ryans, which I thought would have been quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you really had it uh, in in your everyday life since you were yeah. A baby, probably. Yeah, I mean, growing up, there was just always loads of instruments like everywhere. You yeah. Know? So, I I obviously picked up the stringed ones, but um, 
yeah there's like pipes whistles piano everything it's like i saw some on my instagram you were playing the fiddle somewhere on stage yeah. and uh -huh. uh, you play the banjo and yeah. guitar mandolin yeah and mandolin yeah Yeah. Some, or is it just like you just pick a stringed instrument and then you play and it doesn't really matter what it is or I mean, it's definitely my natural go-to instrument yeah string stuff but these are the four that I've kind of and I don't I don't really play guitar professionally that often but I'll play in sessions quite a lot but I play in dadgad you know dadgad tunes yes. yeah I, I, I was I, just I, gonna ask do you use the normal tuning or the some other yeah. but dadgad yeah I don't really play standard at all. I can sort of, I can busk along, but um, yeah, dadgad, I like the I like the sound of it. Yeah, and the banjo, is it like, when did you start playing the banjo? I mean, it's quite a heavy instrument, isn't it? So perhaps yeah. not the first instrument you picked up or how? It was, well, I started, I think I started with violin at school, you know, like when I was in primary four. So it would have been probably eight years old or nine. Wow. Um, I think like a year after that, my dad started learning the banjo, um, but he was left-handed. So I just started like playing along with his. Um, and then a few years later, we decided to get my own one. But then because I was playing on a left-handed banjo, all the strings were upside down for me. Yeah, yeah. So I had, so I had to like relearn it. I thought maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just play it left-handed, but then I thought, no, this is, <laughs> it's not like the most efficient way of playing it. So I eventually yeah. got my Yeah, I got my own banjo and then, yeah, had to just like swap it around. Ten years old, maybe. Okay. And can I ask a stupid question? The banjo you play, is it a tenor banjo or what? Yeah, tenor banjo, yeah. And it has yeah, like same, five strings? Same, four. Four. So, it's, okay. so the ban the tenor banjo, the fiddle and the mandolin are all the same tuning. So I just, just transfer it over. The banjo is tuned as a fiddle? Yeah. Yeah, G D A E. It's all fifths. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I play some mandolin, so yeah, that oh, yeah. I didn't know that. No, I know it. Oh, so, so I'm just pick, picking the same melodies and same fingering, basically. Yeah. But the banjo is like, uh, is like all. Uh, it's such a different uh, style of uh, working. I mean, I can't believe it. How quick you can go. <laughs> and like have you is it just like when you start playing if it's a bit like uh in america and and ireland scotland it's like the the, the pace is so quick with the tunes yeah then you see these sweet kids playing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. i just go like what do they <laughs> eat for breakfast <laughs> and, yeah well, and the, it's the, amazing the, the five string obviously is like the you know the claw hammer yeah Thing, but I just use for the tenor just a plectrum. Yeah. It's just like just literally picking the melodies. You can't you, you can do chords on it, but it's it doesn't really have the sustain to do chords all the time. It's more of a melody thing. Yeah. But I suppose you can do tenor banjo can be used in like some gypsy jazz stuff, isn't it? Kind of that kind of muted kind of stuff. But yeah. Yeah. And and um you have your own band, the Kieran, can I say your name even properly, Kieran? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and you have the Kieran Ryan band, and and then you also play in Dallaham. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah. you are now nominated for an award, yes? Yeah. So Dallaham's nominated for Folk Band of the Year at the the Scots Music Chad Awards. Which is um congratulations for the nomination. That's amazing. And when will you know? You will be at the awards, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's in a couple of weeks on the fourth. Wow. Uh, it's in Dundee, and it's it's always like a great night. It's just a big party, basically. Um. So like a lot, like all your friends are there and people you know. And yeah, it's just always a, a bit of a mad one. So looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, and when I saw I saw some that you can go and vote, but I yeah. guess do you have to be in Scotland or uh, oh, to be, be able? To... Sorry, you can, be, you can be anywhere. Really? Yeah, yeah. So now I need to get this quickly out and just go and vote for uh, Dallahan. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah.
and, and Dalahan is such an amazing band and you you do a lot of tours with Dalahan yeah. yeah we've had the band for like um almost 10 years now so me and the singer Jack and the previous fiddle player Yanni he's from Hungary we started oh, yeah. the band. we started the band yeah 10 years ago in Edinburgh and um yeah it was just a sort of mix of like the, th the three of our kind of physics basically so it was like I, it was mainly Irish um trad and there was like a little bit of Eastern European stuff thrown in with Yanni um, he brought a wow. lot of tunes to the table and he sang a few songs in Hungarian as well um but then he yeah he ended up leaving the band a few years ago so we've got Benedict Morris now on fiddle and um, so we're still doing a little bit of the kind of Balkan stuff but mainly just yeah our, our own original kind of stuff that's in the style of you know Irish trad yeah, but yeah I've been busy enough for the band recently um we're doing a new album at the moment that'll be out in the spring I think next year and when you record this album do you do it live or kind of bit this, by bit this, this is the first time we've done it live yeah so this is Dalhan's fourth album yeah so we decided to because we've we basically rehearsed it like loads and and we've gigged it now on the tour as well so we went to the studio and we just thought let's just you know let's just do it live so we we had full separation and um yeah first time i've ever done it like that it's it's great it's just the way the way to do it i think especially we don't we don't have drums or anything or bass so it's we're very tight you know it's three melodies and a, and a guitar so yeah we've just kind of made sure to be rehearsed enough and yeah yeah i think it paid off it sounds very natural and sounds sounds good i think and you said it will be released in beginning of next year well, probably think... early late spring i think yeah 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 that's amazing so something to look forward there as well and then uh i mean you got many things going and and your own own um uh, project as well or band i mean yeah. project is is kind of not <laughs> i don't really like that word because <laughs> music it's it's more than a project but yeah. so yeah and you've released an album and a single yeah uh, and you are releasing something now as well? Yeah, as well. so I've just got I've just sent it away to be put online. So hopefully hopefully a couple of weeks, I think. Keep an eye out for that. But yeah, I'm gonna do a new album with that as well in February, I think. And and um will it be uh, the same uh, guys playing with you? In yeah. The band? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same guys. So but we've got a producer involved this time. Okay. Um, a guy called Duncan Lyle. He is a bass player. Um, you might have heard of him. He plays a lot. Well, he plays in the Scottish folk scene with loads yeah. of people. Kate he plays with Kate Rusby, English singer. Yes. Um, Damien O'Kane. Yeah, he's Treacherous Orchestra. He's a amazing bass player and producer. So he's bringing him in to sort of help us, kind of you know, guide it in a a little bit of a different direction and. Yeah, sort of tidy it up where it needs to be tidied up and yeah i think it'll be a great addition to help him absolutely because yeah. i think if it's your own if it's your own um band it's your name and you're in the studio i find that if i have an opinion like i don't have to i doubt myself too much and yeah. if i need to ask something of somebody when they're recording i just i just maybe won't ask it in fear of like making an uncomfortable situation where if you have a outside kind of person brought in they can just say that needs to change that needs to go you know mm. uh, do this differently mm. it's well worth well worthwhile even if the producer isn't someone you know that even if you choose someone that doesn't have a massive back catalog of successful albums or just to have even just to have someone there absolutely for, like, and stuff like that you know so that's that's like two albums soon then yeah <laughs> on its way that's so great mm. And your your songs, how are you? I mean, you play a lot. You seem to be touring a lot as well, but you still have time to kind of create new stuff. Um, mm. When do you do this? <laughs> well, I mean, recently I've been really bad for writing. I just had no, I think it's since COVID really. I just not had, because I've been working a, a job. So I've not been, any time I'm not gigging, I've been working 
in a kitchen chefing sort of like which is creative but it's a different you know different area so i found it difficult recently to try and like ignite some kind of tunes but mm. i find to be honest they always like i can't just sit down and write a tune it has to come has to just drop down from the sky otherwise they're really terrible if i try and force it out so they always just like i've not written a a, a tune in a few months now but I was just waiting and like one came to me yesterday and I thought, oh, that's great. So I just, I was in the shower and I <laughs> jump out of the shower, like dripping wet and grab my phone and sing it into my phone. <laughs> that's uh, amazing. Yeah. But maybe it's just that maybe I should be more proactive about it, but I've not found a, I've not found a way of, you know, kind of forcing myself to do it. I just have to wait. Well, then it comes when you stand in the shower. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you should look out and go go have I've, more showers <laughs> you never know what I've, had to, I've had to like um because you know the voice memos app on the phone i've had to like because i had so many just random little recordings that make sense when you record it but then when yeah. you listen back it's just like you going <laughs> and it's like it doesn't make any sense so i've I've got in the habit now of like counting in the, the song or the melody so i'll go one two three and i'll even say like the the key that i think it should be in so I'll go like one two three b minor <laughs> otherwise it's like you know to give it context i need to ask a few quick questions mm -hmm. um uh you, you said also you're a chef uh yeah. and so what's your favorite food oh my favorite food it has to be italian yeah but i think I don't know if I could choose like a, a mix. I, I like the Italian sort of philosophy of cooking where it's, you know, it's like minimal ingredients, simple ingredients, but the very best of each, you know, so so you, you can have like, yeah, you know, it's like the basis of all their things, all their all their dishes, basically. Yeah. Um, so I like using that in kind of with Scottish um, produce, which, which we've got around, which is amazing. And but I also like, I like the, I'm interested in the French kind of te technique side of stuff as well. So yeah, Scottish, French, and Italian. <laughs> wow. And uh, of course, I have to ask. Uh, uh, we hear about haggis. Yeah. <laughs> so, do everyone in Scotland eat haggis for real, or is it just like a, no traditional food that has got I, this? I think pretty much everyone likes haggis. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I'd say, more, I'd say more people dislike mushrooms than they would haggis. Because I think more people would like haggis. Yeah. That's cool. Have probably, you prepared haggis? I've never made it. I, yeah. I would love to I would love to I've cooked it and stuff, but I've never made it. We're actually going to be making it at, at my work soon in the kitchen. Really? Yeah. Um because we're doing all our own kind of charcuterie stuff. So make some haggis soon. Can't wait. <laughs> uh <-huh. Wow. laughs> Do you have a kilt? I don't have a kilt, no. Ah. Um, I, <laughs> I've only worn a kilt maybe like two or three times. Yeah. So I think, yeah, like weddings and stuff, people, most people, I would say most people have a kilt, yeah. I, yeah. I just don't. Like I wore one for prom when I was in school, which I hired. And I wore one for my sister's wedding, which I hired again. Yeah. And just never, just never bought one. Yeah. Even for my for my own wedding, I wore a suit because it was in it was in Italy, so it was roasting hot. And the kilts, even though they're open, yeah, it's still insanely hot because they get these massive woolen socks up to your knees, and it's yeah, they're they're hot. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but they they are very stylish, cool. Yeah, they're like I could to get a proper kilt. You're it's like four or five hundred pounds probably. Wow. Uh, so it's uh, a. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where would you like to be in five years if you talk music wise? Um, I like. I think just. I'd like to be doing like festivals in the summer and maybe a couple, couple of tours, maybe one tour, big tour either side of the summer, and then just you know have the ability to pick and choose, kind of your gigs, so mm. that you just. You know, your your the, the ones you're doing are the value valuable gigs and worthwhile. Um, got some time at home. Mm. Uh, yeah, like a nice a nice balance of doing big gigs, 
worthwhile gigs, fun gigs, and traveling, traveling a bit more, seeing, seeing some more countries with music. Um, yeah, thing. But it's because there's, there's hardly any Scottish people playing tenor banjo. I'm like one of, one of three or four playing it professionally. Wow. I think because there's there's hardly any tenor banjo players in Scotland. So when I was growing up, you know, I wasn't like immersed by other people playing it. So um, I think yeah. I just naturally did my own thing with it. You know, yeah. Um, I was obviously influenced by fiddle players and pipes, you know, pipers and stuff. But in the end, I just yeah, I think that's how I just sort of developed my own kind of thing with it. Whereas if I was in Ireland. I'd be playing with loads of banjo players all the time. So I think, not, not that that's a bad thing, but I think that, you know, obviously then you're more likely to just kind of sound similar to them, you know. Mm, yeah. But it, it feels like it's uh, some kind of also a lot of fusion in your music that you kind of, it's cool to listen to because you you, you can't predict what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> and I think that's cool also when you have the instruments, you have... um and the combination it's it's very i i like that it's yeah that was kind of the from the outset i wanted to make it a like deliberately sort of not like simplify it but because with dalahan we it's very much like we're trying to make it quite um like sophisticated arrangements and you know like lots of interwoven melodies and stuff like that so i, I thought with this i'll try and simplify it a bit and just have kind of quite a quite a hard like rocky sound um and quite um I don't know, in your face kind of you know that that kind of thing like for a design for like a festival crowd basically mm -hmm. so of like ripping fast tunes over the top yeah yeah i actually got mine's given to me by this maker um years ago when i was at there's a big festival in ireland called the fla which is a huge traditional music thing and it, it moves every year to a different town and it's like loads of sessions loads of gigs and teaching and stuff and this guy who makes them had a kind of stall and um i think i was competing that day and he, i was just playing this and i was like oh my god this is amazing yeah and he couldn't, my mom and dad couldn't afford it but he said just take it and just pay me when you can so <laughs> i got this like incredible banjo that was like three thousand euros um when i was 12 and took it back to Scotland and just my mum and dad um, kindly paid for it for me and just wow. paid, him up, paid him up over a few years and yeah such a generous thing to do that's a very beautiful story really and you were 12 then yeah and I've still got the same same banjo so it's, it's wow so, do you have yeah. it there? oh and, uh, and does it have a name doesn't actually I mean I mean have I named it or is it gone yeah <laughs> no. is it a banjo no i mean i i always name my guitars i just okay. wonder have you named I it i haven't named it or her actually yet but the mm. make is called clarine um and it's the model is a pearl so it's got like these kind of pearl inlays on it which wow. is quite nice wow and and hope hope we'll get you over here to finland somehow yeah. And yeah. uh, and um, thank you for your time and uh, all the best to you over there in Beep <laughs> Edinburgh Edinburgh Edinburgh. Oh. <laughs> so take good care now and and good luck with everything and um, it really is great music you do so we need to get it out to people. Thanks, Des. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Des. Bye. 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 -bye. <laughs> Bye.